Go to Acts chapter 4, verse 29 in the New King James Version. Acts chapter 4, I believe they'll put it up on the Blessatron. These guys have been amazing. That's the screens here. I call them Blessatrons. And uh, I don't know, it, Acts chapter 4, take your time. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Here's the back story. Everybody, every eye straight ahead. I no longer see you as somebody attending a meeting with a need. I see you as a weapon in the hand of God that's about to be promoted to your next level of destructive power. You ready? So they said to the disciples, you will no longer be permitted to preach the gospel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the New Jersey and the New York politicians keep handing down, I think they, they go and smoke something and then write a law. And they compare not only notes, but dope. And say, is that stupid enough? Is it stupid enough? I mean, could it be stupider? Now, they say this on an airplane with a straight face. Take a bite and then put your mask back up. Take a sip and then move your mask back up. That is absolute insanity. So what I want you to know is there were politicians in the book of Acts chapter 3 that literally said these words. The most famous quadriplegic in the city, the man that we all know could not move his arms and legs because they placed him in the most lucrative begging spot in the city where everybody went to pray. Everybody knew him because everybody went to pray. He got up and walked. Now we want you to shut up about this. <laughs> and so Peter left being told, don't heal any more people or talk about healing. Do not mention the name that heals. And, and it reminded me one time when I was to speak at a rally in a, uh, in a liberal uh, denomination had a big school and they wanted me to speak. And when I walked out, before I walked out on the side in the vestibule, the leader of the event said, I've listened to your tapes and I have three things that I'm going to tell you you cannot mention in the pulpit. He said, you cannot mention demon possession. That'll scare the kids. And I said, especially the ones that are demon possessed. <laughs> I may be having a good time right now, are you? Yeah. Then, do not mention the baptism in the Holy Spirit because that will scare them. Yep. And then don't tell them that God can use them. Right. How many of you like to know what happened? Yeah. I walked out. And I stood there and I said, you know, I love the leadership of this school. They are so creative. I said, I, I literally was at a loss of what subjects to cover with you. And you, your principal has suggested three wonderful topics. And I'm, I'm a felon. Now watch how that works with Peter. Do not pray for the sick. Do not preach the word of God. Do not mention Jesus. I'm going to try it again. Let's rehearse this together. 
Do not mention the name of Jesus. And do not pray the for the sick. Yeah. So he starts his prayer. Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may preach your word. While you stretch out your hand to heal and let signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. So I'm going to tell you why we're not going to obey the local and government laws that are illegal. Because we are the church. On this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm going to have to get excited myself. Glory to God. Is anybody here? Yeah. Well, here it comes. I was not a felon. I was not a felon because the Constitution of the United States guaranteed that I could do that tent crusade. It guaranteed it. It was one of the rights. The right to assemble and the freedom of religion, both violated by Gavin Newsom. And four churches decided to sue him about it. John MacArthur. Cheon, Jim Franklin, and a Calvary Chapel pastor that I will remember his name. All four of those cases separately made it to the Supreme Court. All four of those cases were ruled in favor of the churches. And Gavin Newsom was convicted by the Supreme Court of religious discrimination. Now, I'm going to ask you right now, do you understand the hour that we're living in? And here's our declaration. They will never lock down the church of Jesus in America ever again, ever again. Come on, shout and give him the glory. Oh, it gets better. Man, you're about to wear me out. You're amening so loud. So the first night, several hundred souls are saved. And the city is strangely quiet. We started talking to the local police individuals that would drive by or walk around and we'd see them around the grounds and they said they said you don't understand we're sick of this ourselves and you know what we're not going to we're not going to bother you because and the police officers of Fresno said you're the hope that these neighborhoods need now i'm going to stop you from clapping because I want you to understand something. You have got to be healed of your inferiority complex. You've got to be healed of this. Even the world, the atheists, the people, the first responders, let's start with them. Even the first responders, anyone who by occupation is touching human need, in the New York, northern New Jersey area, any one of them sees that faith in Christ is the best thing that ever happened to anybody. They see it every day. They see what prayer does. They see what happens in a hospital room when an on-fire pastor versus a dead liberal one walks into a room. They bring light. They bring hope. They bring power. It's time for us 
to stop being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is, it is, it is the power of God to everyone.